morning. Welcome to the select group who are here for Irish studies at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, my name is Mark Hennessy from the Geography Department and I am involved in the administration and the teaching of the uh, Irish Studies Moderatorship Programme. So what I want to do this morning is just introduce you to some key uh, elements, some key aspects of the Irish Studies degree uh, to explain a little bit more than we have available on the web and in the prospectus. A number of things I'd like to establish about the course. First of all, obviously, it's a degree, an honours degree in Irish studies. So one aspect of this course is a very clear focus on Ireland, on Irish culture, Irish civilization, Irish identity, and it is an interdisciplinary focus on Irish culture, identity, civilization. So as an interdisciplinary focus, we bring in we bring in a whole range of disciplines to trying to understand what makes Ireland Irish, how that has changed over time, and uh, to try and bring a critical perspective on how Irish culture and civilization and identity has developed and changed over time and where it is today. By an interdisciplinary perspective, I mean that we try to very definitely avoid simply teaching literature, simply teaching history, simply teaching geography, simply teaching different elements, uh, things about Ireland, but we try to bring those together to see what does the understanding of literature contribute to our understanding of historical change. How can the geographer use literary sources in order to understand regional variations? How can the geographer use an historical perspective in order to understand the, the changing regions of Ireland? What can the literary scholar learn from a knowledge of the environment and environmental change and environmental perceptions, for example? So what we try to do then is, is rather than having, we have a, a type of degree here called the two subject moderatorship which is you do economics and geography or English and history or history and geography. And you do the two subjects pretty well independently for three or four years. We very definitely don't want to see the Irish Studies degree as simply a three or four or five subject moderatorship. You will study courses which would be in the individual subjects but then at the core subjects being history, Irish, and English. But then we have a fourth strand, which is called Imagining Ireland. And Imagining Ireland is something you do every week, for every year of the degree, where we explore the interdisciplinary perspective. So we try to dissolve the boundaries between the different subject areas, and simply talk about, and discuss, and try to understand and explain Irish culture, identity, and civilization. Uh, so for example, when we look at something like, one big thing we do in, in a part of Imagining Ireland is we look at the question of the Celts. Who were the Celts? Did Celts ever come to Ireland? And we look at that through the history of art, we look at archaeology, we look at genetics, uh, we look at place names, we look at literature, we look at the general historical perspective, and we try to bring as many di disciplinary perspectives to bear on this issue of in what way should we think of Ireland as Celtic. And we try to tease out that issue of what it means to, what it means to call the Irish Celtic. And we try to bring as many different subjects to bear on that particular question. And we do that with a series of, of other questions. We do that with the, the use of history and art, for example, and a whole range of different topics. So this is very much not simply a multidisciplinary degree looking at Irish civilization and culture, but an interdisciplinary degree looking at these things. And in that way, I think it's quite different to most of the degree programs uh, that we have. So it's quite clear that one clear focus of the degree program is Ireland, the Irish, Irish identity, and how that's evolved and changed over time up to the present day. We call the, the interdisciplinary course Imagining Ireland. And this is drawn from the work of, of a, 
uh, a literary scholar, Benedict Anderson, who talked about the fact that national identities aren't, don't simply exist, that they have to be imagined. And they have to be imagined by communities of people. So what we're going to look at is the various ways in which what it is to be Irish has been imagined over time. So that's one key sort of pillar plank of what we do. The second thing is that this is not simply a degree program about Ireland and the Irish. So this is not everything I can find out about Ireland in four years uh, and you know, just do a whole range of courses uh, simply to do with Ireland. We stress very strongly that at all times during the course of the degree program that Ireland is placed in wider contexts. So we place Ireland in comparative contexts. So when we're looking at Ireland historically or geographically or in terms of literature or in terms of its environment, we always look at the Britain, Britain and Ireland context, which is absolutely critical at almost all times, going right back into prehistory. So seeing Ireland as part of what one colleague of mine called it the Northwest European archipelago, to avoid calling it the British Islands, we have to see Ireland as part of that complex of islands in the, the northwest of Europe. We also place Ireland then in the European perspective, which I think is extremely important, looking at how Ireland related to Europe as Europe evolved from prehistory right through to the present, because there has always been, going right back into prehistory, there's always been some sense of something that could be called Europe, and that has changed over time and we look at how Ireland fits into that European perspective. So when we look at the, the 17th century, for example, in Imagining Ireland, when we look at the 17th century, we look at how Ireland fitted in with political developments, the counter-reformation in Europe, uh, scholarship and learning in Europe. And we try to see, we try to place developments in Ireland in that bigger framework. Because sometimes in Irish studies, there can be a tendency to be very particular. To, to almost be parochial. And we stress very strongly that we do not take that respect. So obviously, we have a degree program, we've developed a degree program called Irish Studies. We think the study of Ireland is extremely important, and there's an awful lot to be learned from studying Ireland, and Irish civilization merits very close study. But at the same time, we want to absolutely avoid any sense in which we're just studying Ireland. So we place it in this bigger European context, and I think at the present, this is particularly important, is understanding how Ireland has a shared European heritage, as well as a unique heritage. So we do that, and then we also then do Ireland in even bigger global perspectives. So one big global perspective is in the 18th, 17th, 18th, 19th century is Ireland and the, the British Atlantic world. And then later, Ireland and an increasingly globalized world from the late 18th and the 19th centuries onwards. So at all times, we go through those layers of comparative contextualization, all through the four years. So whenever we're talking about any of the specific things to do with Ireland, we are always trying to place it in those wider contexts, comparative contexts. Thirdly then, so we have a, an explicit, self-conscious focus on Ireland, but always in a comparative context. And then thirdly, we also do quite a lot of what I would call sort of generic theoretical framework. So we do a lot on literary theory, we do a lot on social theory, we do things on uh, methods, how to approach studies in the humanities and uh, in the arts and the humanities. We try to give tools that could be used to study any culture or any civilization. So, for example, we have in, in first year, we have a course, course called Theorizing Ireland. And that course introduces you to some key theories in uh, cultural studies. Some of the students find this quite difficult, quite challenging, because some of the, the writing in that area is obscure, to say the least. What we try to do is, is clarify it somewhat. We have courses, for example, such as on the, the genre of the novel, which is not explicitly on Ireland or on the Irish novel. 
It's about how to read novels, how to understand novels, how do novels fit into wider contexts. We do courses on methods of historical study, which are not simply to do with Ireland, they're to do with how do you conduct a proper historical study. So we have a range of courses which I would call generic and theoretical. So on one level, we would see the Irish studies degree as being one that is an arts humanities degree that has a focus on art. So there's two things going on at once. On the one hand, it's very definitely about Ireland and Irish civilization. That's what we're looking at. On the other hand, you could also see it as an arts humanities degree, an interdisciplinary arts humanities degree, where Ireland forms the focus. And we would hope that at the end of the Irish studies degree, that you would be able to go off and look at the culture and civilization of North Carolina, or the culture and civilization of uh, Northumbria, and have a set of generic tools and methods and approaches that would enable you to do that. So that's the way we, we think about the course, and we have the, the core elements of it, of Irish, English, history, and then the interdisciplinary Imagining Ireland element. Two important developments from really from, from last year going into this year. One of them is that we, when we set up the course first of all five years ago, so it's only been going a relatively short while, we had our first graduates this year. Um, when we set up the course initially, we very much had it that Irish language was a compulsory element of the degree. And that we were really the only Irish studies program that insisted on compulsory Irish. So you had to do Irish and you had to pass Irish. So you couldn't fail the Irish element at any stage. What we discovered, and we expected that we would have people coming in with either really good Irish or hardly any Irish at all. What we found was that we had people coming in with just about every level of Irish. And it became really almost impossible to teach all of those people. And some people were just too far away from Irish or didn't have the time to catch up uh, to a, an advanced level of Irish in order to be able to do the third and the fourth year courses. So what we have done now is we've established a strand A, which is the original compulsory Irish element, our, our strand through the degree, and a strand B where you don't do Irish. And you do all of your courses through English, even the ones that are dealing with Irish literature. So in the strand B, we don't ignore Irish literature or the Irish language element of Irish civilization at all, but we teach it through English. Because some people simply were, were never going to reach the, the level of Irish that was required for the third and fourth year courses. For those people who would take strand B, we strongly encourage and try to facilitate them to learn Irish. So we haven't sort of backed off on thinking that the learning of Irish is important for, for Irish studies, but we found that in terms of the degree structure, we needed to have an English language only uh, tuition element. In. So we would strongly encourage people to join the, the Common Gaelic, the Irish Society and College, which is very strong and very good. We encourage visits to the Gaelic Talks. We encourage going to Irish language courses. Uh, there are Irish language courses in college as well. Uh, and we, but that would be as an aside to the degree program. So I think that's one important development that if you are unsure about your Irish or you think that your Irish is never going to reach a sort of a, a very high standard by the third year, you can go down this strand B uh, route. The second important development is more practical, and that is that last year we received certification from the Teaching Council of Ireland so that Irish Studies graduates will be certified to teach in Irish, English, History, or two of those depending on what route they follow through their degree. So you'll be able to sign up for a HDIP and uh, go into teaching and be certified. We had a long struggle with the Teaching Council of Ireland to, to get there because we had to demonstrate to them that our course wasn't just about Ireland. We had to demonstrate to them that we had all of these generic and comparative elements in the degree, so that somebody who did the history component of the Irish Studies degree wasn't simply learning Irish history, that they were learning comparative and generic things to do with history as well. So that was an important development. 
So we have departments, history, English, Irish, geography, that's me, I do the interdisciplinary bit. We also have people coming in from politics, from the history of art, film and drama studies, genetics, amazing stuff coming in from the geneticists, linguistics. We hope to provide people to the degree with a new perspective on the distinctive character of Irish culture, more generically introduce students to new developments, the arts, humanities, and social sciences, and what I personally think is the most important thing is to encourage a critical, critical engagement with material. To my mind, an arts humanities degree, the most important thing that you come out with from any arts humanities degree is your ability to think critically, not to take anything as a given. Your ability to think critically, develop arguments, and be able to articulate those arguments in writing and in oral presentations uh, that is the most important thing. I think it's wonderful that people learn about history or learn about Ireland in Irish studies, but the thing that will probably last longest is a, a training in critical thought and the ability to articulate your critical thoughts in writing and uh, in oral presentation. And that's true of any arts and humanities degree, and it doesn't really matter what the subject is. So we have a number of things. I'll just go through this, this one quickly. I've done most of these ones. The other thing people ask about then is, you know, where am I going with this? What sort of job can I get out of an Irish studies degree? Well, I would say the same sort of jobs you get out of any arts humanities degree. So most employers who, who hire arts humanities, apart from people who are going into teaching, uh, or maybe some other very specific jobs. When they hire an arts humanities graduate, they are they're interested mostly in how well you have done. Now, they, are, they do like certain subjects, but uh, what will really count is how well you have done. And what will really count if you go to an interview is how well you have developed your critical faculties and how articulate you have become. So, how well you're able to develop an argument, to answer a question, and to articulate yourself clearly and effectively and independently. That's what we're really saying to you. People in arts humanities degrees go into the media, they go into the civil service, they go into banking, they go into computing, they go into law, they go into just about anything. And really, I think with a, a primary arts humanities degree, you should be building up your career thinking as you go through that degree. And college offers quite a lot. Any questions? I asked you a question already. Did I have the Irish? Don't be shy. In college, and um, there are a range of Irish language courses in college for different abilities. So the, the Irish office, there's a nothing to get and they. They do quite a lot, they're quite active in college. And um, so they offer a range of different courses, short courses and longer courses. And there are also some very good courses outside, like the Gale Inn courses are extremely good. There are extremely good uh, courses you can do in the Gale Talk. And we would certainly advise and help and facilitate and encourage an Irish study student uh, who didn't want to do art uh, to take up those opportunities. The Common Gaelic is great if you were learning as well as a receptive environment in the Common Gaelic for a place to speak Irish. And most of us in the Irish Studies program will speak Irish as well. Some of us don't. He's trying very hard. <laughs> but most of us will be able to speak Irish as well. Uh, later on during the day if you want to follow up anything is out of the, the Irish.